In part two of our lesson on the trigonometric functions of non-acute angles, we're going to learn how to use the special angles as reference angles. So in order to do this, we need a couple pieces of information here. We need to fill in the trig function values of the special angles. Now remember, this chart is as easy as 1, 2, 3. We know we put them over 2, put in the radical over 2, put in radical 3 over 2, and then the second row becomes 3, 2, 1. Put in the radical over 2, put in the radical over 2, over 2. And then for the third row, you can see the fraction bar between the first two rows and 1 over radical 3 would be radical 3 over 3. Rad 2 over 2 over itself is 1 and rad 3 over 2 over a half, the 2's cancel and we get radical 3. Over here we're going to fill in all the signs of the trig functions. Now remember in quadrant 1 all of them are positive, so we can go ahead and put a plus sign by every single trig function in quadrant 1. Now sine of theta is controlled by y, so we know sine of theta is positive in quadrants 1 and 2 and negative in quadrants 3 and 4. And of course its reciprocal function, cosecant, has the same positive or negative sign. So cosecant is positive in quadrant 2 and it will be negative in 3 and 4. Cosine we know is positive in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 4 because that's where x values are positive and so it'll be negative in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. So then that means secant will follow those same plus and minus signs. So secant will be negative in quadrant 2, negative in quadrant 3, and positive in quadrant 4. Tangent, we know, is positive whenever x and y have the same sign, so that's going to happen in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 3. So then that means cotangent is also positive in quadrant 3 and tangent and cotangent will be negative in quadrants 2 and 4. Next we're going to learn a method for evaluating trig function values in all quadrants. So there's four steps to this method and I think the best way to learn the method is to just work an example problem using the method. So in this first example, we have to evaluate the cosine of 150 degrees. So let's walk through these four steps. Step one says, draw a diagram of theta. Now we know that 150 degrees is going to live in quadrant two. Step two says to determine the reference angle, theta r. And we know that the reference angle goes between the terminal side of theta and the nearest x axis. So here's theta r right here. And we can see that theta r is going to be 180 minus 150, which is 30 degrees. Next, we find the value for the trig function of theta r on the special angle chart. And we go to the cosine row and we go to the 30 degree column. We see that that value is radical 3 over 2. So we know that the cosine of 30 degrees would be 
radical 3 over 2. Finally, we'll determine the positive and negative sign based on the quadrant of theta. Now remember that theta is in quadrant 2 and in quadrant 2 we know that cosine is negative. So then that means that the cosine of 150 degrees is going to be negative radical 3 over 2. So what we did was we combined the fact that the cosine of our reference angle, 30 degrees, had a value of radical 3 over 2 with the fact that in quadrant 2 cosine is negative and that's how we knew that cosine of 150 degrees was going to have to be negative radical 3 over 2. Next up we have to evaluate the tangent of 315 degrees and we're going to work our way through the four steps again. So step one says to draw a diagram of theta. Now we know that 315 degrees is in quadrant four and it's going to land between 270 and 360 degrees. Here's the rotation. Step two says to determine the reference angle. We know the reference angle is going to be between the terminal side of theta and the nearest x-axis. So there's theta r. And to find theta r, we're going to do 360 degrees minus 315 degrees and we find out that theta r is 45 degrees. Step 3 says to find the value for the trig function of theta r on the special angle chart. So we look in the tangent row and the 45 degree column and we see that the tangent of 45 degrees is equal to 1. Step 4, we have to determine the positive and negative sign based on the quadrant of theta. And in quadrant 4, we know that tangent is negative. So we know then that the tangent of 315 degrees is going to have to be negative and its value is going to be 1. So the tangent of 315 degrees is equal to negative 1. Next up, we're going to evaluate the sine of negative 225 degrees. It's CYU time, so pause the video, work the example on your own, then restart the video to check your answer. So our first step is to draw a diagram of theta, and this time theta is negative, so we've got 0, negative 90, negative 180, negative 270. So we can see that negative 225 degrees is going to land in quadrant 2. Here's the rotation. Step 2, we have to find the reference angle. We still do it the same way between the terminal side and the nearest x-axis. So here's theta r, and theta r, remember when you do subtraction you always do the greater number minus the smaller number, so we would do negative 180 minus negative 225, 
to get negative 180 plus 225, which is equal to 45 degrees. So there's our reference angle. Step three, we go to the sine row and the 45 degree angle on the special angle chart. And we see that the sine of 45 degrees is equal to radical 2 over 2. Last, we have to look at the quadrant. And we know in quadrant 2 that the sine function is positive. So we know that the value then of sine of negative 225 degrees is going to be positive radical 2 over 2. Next up, we have to evaluate the cotangent of 150 degrees. Now the first thing to notice, of course, is that cotangent is not on our special angle chart, but we know that we can use the reciprocal identity that lets us say that this is 1 over the tangent of 150 degrees. And now we can work forward on this problem finding the tangent of 150 and just put it in the denominator here. So 150 degrees we know lives in quadrant 2. So that's step 1. Step 2 we know is to find the reference angle. And we know theta r you can see it's going to be 30 degrees. If you're not sure, you can do the calculation of 180 minus 150 to get 30 degrees. Next, we look on the special angle chart and we're using the tangent row and we use our reference angle of 30 degrees and the tangent of 30 we see is radical 3 over 3. So we know that's going to be the value, the numerical value. Next, we have to consider the positive and negative sign. And in quadrant 2, we know that the tangent is going to be negative. So now we know that we have 1 over negative radical 3 over 3, which turns into negative 3 over radical 3. And we now have to rationalize rad 3 over rad 3. And this becomes negative 3 radical 3 over 3. And of course, these 3's are going to cancel, so this simplifies to become negative radical 3. The next example, we have to evaluate the cosecant of 420 degrees. So 420 degrees we know is going to be more than one cycle. So we would have to go all the way around to 360 degrees. And if we kept going to the next quadrantal angle, we know that would be 450 degrees. So that means 420 degrees falls in between those two. So here's 420 and we have to show the rotation. Theta r, we find in the same way as always, it's an acute angle between the terminal side of theta and the nearest x-axis. So here's theta r. And the calculation for theta r is that it will be 420 degrees 
minus 360 degrees, which is 60 degrees. Now cosecant is not on our chart, but we know that we can write cosecant as 1 over the sine of 420 degrees. We have our reference angle, 60 degrees, so we're ready to look on the chart. We look in the sine row and the 60 degree column and we find out that the sine of 60 degrees is equal to radical 3 over 2. The only thing left to consider now is the quadrant and we know in quadrant 1 sine will be positive. All the trig functions are positive in quadrant 1. So now we know that this will be 1 over a positive radical 3 over 2 which becomes 2 over radical 3 and then we have to rationalize rad 3 over rad 3 so this becomes 2 radical 3 over 3 The next example, we have to evaluate the secant of 315 degrees. Let's check your understanding. So pause the video, work the example on your own, then restart the video to check your answer. We know we can rewrite this as 1 over the cosine of 315 degrees. And now we can march right through the four steps. We know that 315 degrees is going to be in quadrant 4. So we can draw our picture. Make sure you show the rotation and the reference angle is going to be between the terminal side and the nearest x-axis and we see that theta r is going to be 360 degrees minus 315 degrees which is 45 degrees. Now we look on the special angle chart in the cosine row, 45 degree angle, and we see that the cosine of 45 degrees is equal to radical 2 over 2, and we know in quadrant 4 that the cosine function is going to be positive So then this becomes 1 over positive radical 2 over 2 which is equal to 2 divided by radical 2 and then we have to rationalize. This becomes 2 radical 2 over 2. The 2's are going to cancel and it simplifies to equal radical 2. In this next example we have to evaluate 2 times the sine cubed of 240 degrees minus the tangent squared of 330 degrees. Now using the shorthand notation that we learned earlier, we know this means we're taking 2 times the sine of 240 degrees cubed 
and we're subtracting the tangent of 330 degrees squared. So we're going to need to make two drawings here, one for each angle. If we look at this first angle of 240 degrees, we know that that's going to land in quadrant 3. We have 240 degrees, 180 would be right here. Here's the rotation of the angle. Here's theta r between the terminal side and the nearest x-axis. And we see that theta r is going to be 240 minus 180, which is equal to 60 degrees. Now we have to look on the special angle chart and our trig function here is the sine function, so we need to get the sine of 60 off the special angle chart, and we see that that's radical 3 over 2. Now in quadrant 3, we know that the sine will be negative, so then that means that the sine of 240 degrees is going to be negative radical 3 over 2 and we'll have to cube that. Now we have to subtract the tangent of 330 degrees. So 330 degrees we know is going to be in quadrant 4 Here's 360. We have to find our reference angle, and that's going to be from the terminal side to the nearest x-axis. There's theta r. The calculation for theta r in this case will be 360 degrees minus 330 degrees, which we know is 30 degrees. So that's the angle we'll look up on the special angle chart. So we go to the tangent row, the 30 degree column, and we get that the tangent of 30 degrees is radical 3 over 3. Now we're ready to decide the positive or negative sign based on the quadrant. And we know that in quadrant 4, the tangent function is going to be negative. So then the value is going to be negative radical 3 over 3 squared. We have 2 times. Now we know a negative cubed is still going to be negative, and radical 3 times radical 3 would be 3, and then we have one more radical 3. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Now we know when we square a negative, it becomes positive. Radical 3 squared is going to be 3. 3 squared is going to be 9. So now we have the 2. We'll go into the 8 and we'll have negative 3 radical 3 over 4 minus 3 over 9 reduces to one-third. We can see that our common denominator is going to be 12. So this first fraction we're going to need to multiply by 3 over 3. 
and the second fraction will have to multiply by 4 over 4. So finally we're going to get 3 times 3. We've got negative 9 radical 3 minus 4 over 12. To summarize, here's your toolkit for evaluating trig functions of special angles. You will need these three items. Your chart showing the signs of the trig functions, your special angle chart giving the trig function values, and the four steps for evaluating trig function values in all quadrants.